As I'm sure we all know by now, Python 3.13 released earlier this week, and there were so many things to talk about, so many huge changes, I didn't really get the opportunity to talk much about the typing changes in my release video. And so I thought to rectify that situation, I'll make a separate video talking about the major changes. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the defaults in type bars, I'm gonna be talking about the deprecated decorator, I'm also gonna be talking about the read only and type is forms. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. There's all that out of the way, let's talk about the major typing changes in Python 3.13. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the new type bar defaults. I'm going to be first showing off an example of an app that has a context in it without any defaults and then I'm going to be showing what's changed and how that can help. Uh, so if you do from typing uh import generic and then type bar and then say you have a class of context which will definitely be our context object and then we had t and we're just going to leave that as type var t for now uh, and then you had a class of custom context do, 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 do. and that definitely has all all these attributes to it and then we have a class of app which has a generic type of t and then it has a context, which is this type T. So this T is the context type. Uh, if we then did if name double equals main, uh, did app equals app, uh, and then we did reveal uh, type app.context, the first thing you'll notice is that this will complain, or my pie will complain that you need a type annotation because there isn't enough information uh, currently for my pie to be able to infer what this context should be. And if we reveal the type of this app.context, uh, it is of type any. Now in prior to 3.13, you can fix this by doing app context like that. And now it stopped complaining and app.context is context. And then you could set uh, your custom context like this and app.context to be custom context. However, if we get rid of this again, if we now set a default to be context, will no longer get that error and app.context will see that it's supposed to be of type context. So you now don't have to specify a generic type to get app to understand what you wanted to do. And this is really useful, say if you had a framework with this app in it and this context was almost always gonna be this context class, but you wanted to provide the uh, ability to overload it and you wanted to provide a generic type to enable type checkers to work around that you could do that and if you wanted to do custom context you still could do the custom context syntax like that and that context would be custom context uh, but getting rid of that means that it would just default to the context so that's a really nice change the second thing is the warnings dot decorated uh sorry warnings dot deprecated almost said it right uh decorator that was introduced so if i do that from warnings import deprecated and this deprecated um decorator does two things it first emits a runtime warning or well it emits a deprecation warning but it emits it at runtime but it also will let type checkers know that something has been deprecated and then they could take the appropriate actions so if you had say a hello world function that then printed uh, hello world and i always like it like that there we go and then say there was this newer version of it called hello. And then you could have an entity passed to it. So you could suddenly now say hello to everything. And for backwards compatibility, let's say this just has world as a default. And then prints hello entity. You could mark this first one as deprecated by using this deprecated decorator. You need to provide some sort of message. So we could say use uh, hello uh, world instead like that and now if we were to call this hello world uh, function down here then pylance this is pylance is doing would notice that and it would say the function hello world is deprecated use hello world instead uh, my pi and pyrite i don't believe are capable of doing this i haven't actually tried it with pyrite let me have a look uh pyrite uh warnings deprecated does this understand is an unknown import symbol. No, it doesn't know. <laughs> uh, and then if we do, of course, hello world, then everything will be fine. Uh, but both will still work. 
but you'll see on this first one, we get a deprecated warning actually at runtime, uh, telling us the same thing to use hello world instead. So you could put anything in this message. You could put uh, a version that something will be removed, or you could put the um, the replacement in like I've done here, or you could realistically just put anything in there you wanted. It doesn't really matter. The third thing that I'm going to show is arguably the least useful, I would say, out of out of the four things we're talking about today. And it's also the one that doesn't work in either MyPy or PyWrite. So I don't really know what to deal with that is. But if we have readonly.py, it is a new um, update to TypeDict or a new thing that TypeDict can use to set um, dict entries as read-only. So we could do from typing uh, import type, oh, if I could type, type dict and then read only. If we were to sit there and have a class user uh, type dict and then they had an ID, which we wanted to be read only, and we would say that was an integer, uh, a name, which is a string, uh, and an email, which is also a string. And we'll see we do actually get the typing error from MyPy saying it's not valid as a type. And then um, the PyWrite will actually complain as well. Uh, I don't know why I did it like that. <laughs> saying that read only is an unknown import symbol. So neither of them work. I don't know why, but I have double checked and it is definitely the right one. And this read only when it's implemented in the type checkers will tell the type checkers that you cannot change that uh, entity or more realistically that you shouldn't change the entity because read only doesn't actually do anything at runtime. You can still change it, of course, but the type checker will throw a fit. Uh, now, because it doesn't work in type checkers yet, I can't actually show you a proper example beyond this <laughs> because I don't think they'll know what to do. Actually, pylance might know what to do. Let's, let's have a go. Um, so if we were to say uh, user, uh, user equals and an ID equals one name, John and that. If you were to say user ID equals two. Okay, nothing's going to happen. I was hoping PyLance might have caught up, but this would throw a typing error if it was implemented in type checkers, but it's not annoyingly. And finally, the last thing I want to show you is the type is, which is actually something that I'm very excited uh, is in this. So type is replaces, quote unquote, the type guard. Uh, it sits alongside it. The type guard isn't being deprecated at all but it provides behavior that type guard probably should have done initially. Uh, so if you do from typing import type guard and type is, cause I want to show the old and new behavior. And if we have a class called dog and we want to do def bark and it'll print woof. Uh, and then if we had a class cat, there you go, the arrow knows what I want to do. That will meow. And if we had a type predicate that was is dog, uh, passing the object type card dog, and in this return uh, is oh the the AI has just decided it's going to completely stop working. That's good. Uh, object and then dog. So this is basically what's known as a type predicate, uh, which is where you have a function that returns true or false depending on whether or not something is a type, and you can use type cards in these situations. And if we had another function called speak uh, animal, and that was either a dog or a cat, uh, and that returned, oh my, I just cannot type today. And we did that. So if the dog is an animal, then animal.bark, else animal.meow. And you'll see here that we get an underlying error because item dog of dog or cat has no attribute meow. And that's because type guard only works with the positive case. So when we use type guard, we can see that animal is a dog because the type predicate has passed. And we now know that everything uh, referencing animal in this block should be a dog. What it doesn't do is it doesn't handle the negative case at the same time. So you could have a separate type predicate that checked if it was a cat. So you could do elif is cat and that would probably work. But with else, it still says it could either be a dog or a cat. If you didn't want that behavior, you could use type is, and now suddenly everything's fine. So this else, um, it knows that it cannot be a dog, which of course is the logical course of action. And I don't know why type guards could never do this. But if you highlight over animal now, it is a cat. There were some other typing changes as well, but generally a lot smaller. So 
typing on is protocol function that you can use to check if something is a protocol, for example. Uh, but these were the four changes with peps assigned to them and as such are the only four that I'm going to talk about in this video. But do let me know in the comments if there are any particular typing changes in Python 3.13 that you liked that I haven't mentioned here. And if you want to see more videos where I'm talking about typing, I have a playlist called Python Typed that will be linked in the end cards for you to watch after this. I'll see you next time for whatever we do next.